When we're saying technology driven, we're saying that that PLC should connect into that technology stack out of the box without having to put something in the middle. Is Rockwell open or not? That means, does Rockwell, is Rockwell open architecture? The answer is no, okay? They are not open architecture. Are there ways for you to connect into a Rockwell ecosystem and serve data out and to other applications? Yes, there, they are, there is. But you will do that connection and you will do that sharing on a case-by-case -case basis, on a solution-by-solution -solution basis. You share information from a Control Logics PLC to an external consumer in a completely different way than you share information from Factory Talk View or from Factory Talk Analytics. Okay. So the answer is they are not no. They are not technology driven. That is, I can't take the a stack of Rockwell products, drop it into my ecosystem, and have them and and say that they support technology that is edge driven, report by exception, open architecture, and lightweight, so that I can connect it into my existing e ecosystem. That Rockwell does not meet those requirements. So that means I got to put something in the middle. And when I put something in the middle, I've got to create a, on a case by case basis, I have to engineer a unique, a unique interface to expose that data. And that gets expensive. Okay? And that's not that, scalable. It's not scalable. You can't scale it. You spend all your time building those discrete connections. Okay. As soon as you add something on the edge, a new date, you know, I add a new instrument, I've got to go all the way up through all those hops and add and add them in. Okay. Here's the other reason they're not open. Okay. So that we already know they're not open. So now let's talk about why Rockwell, why they're not open. And again, I'm not picking on Rockwell here. I'm using Rockwell as the example. There are other companies that are like this. Okay. What I would say is that of all the big companies, and if we're going to, if we're going to say the big boys are Schneider, Aviva, Rockwell, and Siemens. Those are your four, let's say those are your big ones. Rockwell is the only one who is making no moves to go open and technology driven. Siemens is at basically building this separate stack that's technology driven and open architecture. Aviva is building this separate stack that's technology driven and open architecture. And Schneider is, it looks like all their future products are gonna be IIoT ready technology driven and open architecture. That looks like that's what they're doing. There are lots of mid-sized companies and smaller companies who are not vertically integrated. Their business is not vertically integrated who are adopting these technologies all day, every day of the week. Okay. And Rockwell and inductive automation was the company. They responded to the way Rockwell did business. Wonderware did business. Schneider did this business and they created the platform that got all this started. And Arlen Nipper is the one who developed the technology along with IBM to make it possible. All for the same reasons, that none of this makes sense. This unified approach makes no sense. So let's talk about the why. So we, I've already established, no, Rockwell's not open. Now let's talk about the why, okay? And I'm gonna use their trademark filing for the connected enterprise as the argument, okay? So for those of you that don't know, when you file for a trademark, if I wanna go trademark, a term or a logo or whatever, I have to tie that trademark to commercial activity. Okay. So what I can't, what I can't be Rockwell Automation and I can't create a concept called the connected enterprise and then trademark it so that no one else can use it. I can't create a concept. Okay. What I have to do is I have to create a solution that is unique to me that I own, intellectual property that I own. I can call it what I want. I can tie what I called it to the product that I sold. And then I can say that that's called commercial activity. And I can, and I can say, I own that. I don't want anyone else to be able to use the term, the connected enterprise. So by virtue of Rockwell creating the connected enterprise and trademarking it, registering the trademark, what they are saying is we own it and no one else can use it. That, I mean, that's, legally what they're doing. That's legally, their le legal department in 2018, so this is, this is two months before Automation Fair in 2018, when they rolled out the concept of the connected enterprise, the connected enterprise, that, that rollout coincided 
with the announcement of the PTC partnership, right? Then Zach and I were on, were at in Philadelphia for this big announcement. They first used it in commerce right before Automation Fair, okay? The Rockwell Automation, by virtue of their filing for trademark and registration, is saying the connected enterprise is something we own. And therefore, the, the connected enterprise, by definition, is not designed to work with something that Rockwell doesn't own. Because if they were, if it were, the connected enterprise, the, the word, the, the products they sell, would then revert back to a concept, okay? And if it's a concept, it can't be trademarked. You're not plugging into a connected enterprise. You're not creating a connected enterprise that is an ecosystem of Rockwell products and Siemens products and everybody else's products. What you are doing when you say we're going to use the connected enterprise from Rockwell Automation, what you're saying is you're using Rockwell Automation's connected enterprise. And you, what you are doing is you are operating under the assumption you're going to use all the stuff that Rockwell offers and you're going to use any of their partners, but you are going to, you're accepting the, the, you're accepting the reality that if I want to use something that Rockwell doesn't own or is not one of their partners, I'm accepting the responsibility that it's not going to play nice. That, I mean, that's now, you know, I'm using this trademark filing to kind of drive home this point. Now Rockwell is free. Their, their sales engineers are free to go to your company and tell you, yeah, oh yeah, we can, we can connect, you know, this software to other stuff we use. We have rest endpoints and we use, we have a SOAP API and we have, you know, OPC UA servers, or we can connect the databases. Sure. That's all true. And I'm not saying that they can't connect the database, but that's not open. Okay. And that, that, that's, that's only partially open. Okay. Because not everything that you want to see inside of a Rockwell solution is exposed by one of those endpoints. Okay. I can't look at individual parameters of the software if I wanted to. Okay. Right. I can't do that. That's not open. It's partially open, it's limited open, and it's not technology driven. That is, as long as my technology is, we're gonna talk through SQL, which doesn't scale. As long as my technology is, I'm gonna build a custom REST endpoint for every one of my connections. I'm gonna have a, an API parser, a REST parser for every single connection to every single piece of software. As long as I accept that, then I, I'm never going to be able to scale across my business and won't be cost effective but it certainly is an edge driven report by exception, lightweight or open architecture, right? So that's the reason Rockwell is not open. And I challenge any, you know, someone from Rockwell will say, oh, we support, you know, we have this new MQTT block inside of that you can put in control logics now. It's true that, that they do support MQTT, but they don't, but it is, it is incredibly limited and it doesn't support Sparkplug B. Why now is Ignit, why is Rockwell not going to support Sparkplug B? It's because they're a Microsoft partner and AWS is, is real big with Sparkplug B right now and, and Azure is not, okay, if we're being honest. And the connection between Rockwell solutions and, and Azure solutions are discrete connections that Microsoft and Rockwell Canada created for you. They may use MQTT to publish it, but that's not open. It's meant to only go to Azure. Okay. So anyway, well, and, that, that's the, yeah, and on the Rockwell thing, like just because they have an MQTT block, I mean, that's like a little band aid. like, cause they have a little back door that you can get MQTT in and out of doesn't mean it was built upon the principles and foundation of industry 4.0 and have that be the primary method of communication. Correct. So I would really, I'd, I'd love, I want to have a, a bigger conversation about this specifically. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not picking on, I'm using Rockwell as the example here. They are not alone, okay? Um, but there is some micro content in there, Zach, where I say, you know, Rockwell's doing this and, you know, and, and I, I invite Rockwell to, um, you know, come on our podcast, meet with us, you know, come to our office and, you know, and have a conversation with us. Let me lay it out. I can tell you this, Rockwell makes no efforts to work with us in any way, shape or form. And their, their distributors make no effort to work with us. Okay. Because I was surprised is, they let me into the, 
into their headquarters to interview their a couple of their you know executives. I, I I assure you, there's no one. We have people from Siemens reaching out reaching out to us. We have people from Schneider reaching out to us. We have Stefan Hopp from the OPCU Out Foundation has emailed me several times. Stefan, I haven't forgot about you. I am going to shoot your video. Rockwell has made no attempt to reach out to us in any way, shape, or form. And the reason why is they really cannot defend themselves. I mean, I, the it is understood that when Rockwell, it is understood that when you are a Rockwell partner, you're not going to challenge them on the warts. It is understood. You're not going to ask them about the warts. You're not going to put a, you're not going to shine a light on the warts. You're not going to do that. That's when I say that companies like the big boys operate like the mafia because they will hammer you for asking the question. They won't answer it, but they'll hammer you for just asking it. And, and believe me, I'm not telling our audience anything they don't already know. And that's the reason Rockwell automation is not open. That's the, that's the, are they answering the question? Are they open? And no, they are not. And why are they not open? And then using their trademark filing as a, you know, to, um, you know, hammer home the point. I'm really looking for feedback here. You know, what I want is anyone who comments, if you're going to comment and defend Rockwell, I want you to make the arguments for why they are open, you know, make the actual arguments for why they are open and how they will fit into a technology driven stack. Tell me, give me that example. Because right now when we use a control logic PLC or a compact logic PLC, we are routing that PLC through an OPC UA server. Most of the time, we're either connecting it to Capware, and then we can use the IoT gateway, or we're connecting it to Ignition directly and then using Sparkplug B out, uh, transmitters out. Other ways that we do it is we connect it through Factory Studio, same thing, or we connect it using the Hybyte Intelligence Hub and, and shipping it out. Sometimes we use the, the Maple System CMT SVR. I mean, what we're, when we're saying technology driven, we're saying that that PLC should connect into that technology stack out of the box without having to put something in the middle.